That, my friends, is called the base shake effect. It has a fast and easy way to add power and energy to your videos. So that's why in this video, I'm gonna show you how to make it so that you can make your videos look even better. But first, if you're new here, my name is Billy Ripka and I make weekly videos all about teaching you to become a better video editor. So if you wanna level up your editing skills, click that subscribe button and the bell notification so that you don't miss out on anything. All right, so first things first, for this tutorial, you're gonna need some footage. This literally can be anything that you wanna put this bass effect on. Then we're gonna need some music, preferably something with heavy bass, since, you know, bass effect. So the song that I'm using is called Level Up and it's from Musicbed. And no, this video is not sponsored, but I will link this song in the description so you guys can check it out for yourself. And I know you can download the whole song for free, if you get a free account, I mean, it's going to have a watermark on it, but still like you can follow the tutorial, just saying. So once you've got your music and your footage, we're good to go. So this effect is really good for those hard initial bass hits just like this. So to actually make this effect, we're gonna have to jump into DaVinci Resolve. Now on my timeline, you can see I have my video right here and my music. So all I'm gonna do is listen through this quickly to find all of those heavy bass hits and mark it by hitting M on the keyboard to add a marker. Now I'm just gonna fine tune these markers because I clearly was off a little in some areas. So, uh, oops. Now once you've done that, we're gonna add an adjustment clip. So go to the effects library right here and under effects, just grab an adjustment clip and drag it in right there. And then I'm just gonna make a cut at the next bass hit right there and delete everything to the right of it because I want this adjustment clip to end at the next bass hit. Now in the effects library, we're gonna go into open effects and grab our zoom blur and drag it onto the adjustment clip right here. Yeah, that's definitely zoom blur. So now I'm gonna go and hit this drop down arrow right here and select open effects overlay. And now you can see that we have this middle point right here and this ultimately just shows the center of our effect. So in the inspector tab, we're gonna click effects and play with our zoom blur. First thing is go down here to the center exclusion and bring it up to like a 120 would be fine for this. Then I'm gonna grab this point and move the position onto our person right there. So you can see that the zoom blur is super heavy on the outside as opposed to the inside where he's in focus. Now I'm gonna increase the zoom amount to like, you know, 0.600 or something like that. Yeah, that's what we want. So now in the effects library, I'm gonna type in prism blur and spell it wrong drag it onto the adjustment clip as well. And once again, I'm gonna go to the inspector tab and open up prism blur right here by just double clicking on it. Then I'm gonna change the position just so it's on the person and drag down the blur strength like that. Now I want that really cool like chromic aberration. So I'm gonna go over to the aberration distance right here and type in like 0 0.170, so 0.170. Then I'm gonna get a lot of it, like right there. So yeah. Now under aberration strength, I'm gonna bring it down to about 360, right? Just for, just for now, we're gonna leave it there. All right, so we're not done, but so far this is what we have. And it kind of just sucks if I'm gonna be honest. Like it, I don't know, it doesn't add that nice like hit. So we're gonna add it. To do that, make sure your adjustment clip is selected and then go to video right here. Then click on our video tab right here and go all the way down to dynamic zoom and turn it on. What this is gonna do is give us that initial punch. So go to dynamic zoom ease right here and switch it from linear to ease out. Now finally, I want our effects to lose all of their power by the end of this clip right here so that in the beginning, it just seems like it's a really hard hit. So to do that, make sure your playhead's at the beginning of the adjustment clip and then go to the effects tab right here. Then go down to zoom amount and add a keyframe and also open up prism blur and under aberration strength, add a keyframe there. Now I'm gonna move to the end of the clip and bring both of those down to zero and be careful for the zoom blur because that's a sneaky thing. It goes past zero into the negatives. So uh, 
Trust me, <laughs> gonna get a weird effect if you do that. So now let's take a look at it. Just a little side note here, if you're getting this weird ripple effect in your zoom blur, it's not gonna show up in the final render. I don't exactly know why it does that. I tried it, it does not show up in your final export. Now I have a question for you. As a video editor, what are some of your biggest struggles? Let me know in the comments below. For me, it's staying focused and not getting lost in perfectionism. I mean, if I did that, I probably would have never made a video. So think about that. It kind of just hits a place where done is better than perfect. And that is a super important tip right there. Anyways, if you want more videos like this, click on the top for a playlist with all of my DaVinci Resolve tutorials, or click on the bottom for a video that YouTube thinks that you would like. But until the next one, peace.